Ah! My husband Eric came up from behind and shoved me. I had no idea he was trying to hurt me and our unborn child. I wanted kids so badly, but at that moment, I realized my life was more important than my unborn child. I can't believe it happened. As I lie here in the hospital bed, the trauma is replaying in my mind. My name is Jessica. I'm 38 and I work part time while managing the household. I live with my Eric, my husband, who is also 38. We don't have any children yet, and it's been a long struggle for me. I've been undergoing fertility treatments since I turned 33. The problem is Eric's. His sperm just doesn't move well enough. But fertility treatments take a huge toll on women. Balancing that with work was exhausting, both physically and mentally. I felt like giving up more than once. On top of it, it was financially draining, so my parents helped out with the costs. They think of it as money for fertility treatments, and I feel the pressure to meet their expectations. My parents are very supportive, but it's the complete opposite with Eric's mom. Jessica, you still don't have a baby yet? She often snaps. You've been married for three years. How laid back can you be? Her passive aggressive comments cut deep. Eric doesn't say much, but I can tell by his silence that he agrees with her. His mom's almost 70 now. And she's desperate to see her grandchild before it's too late. But it's not my fault we can't conceive. It's Eric's. Between work, house chores, fertility treatments, and her constant criticisms, I feel overwhelmed. My only solace is my cat, Max. Max always knows when I'm down. When I vent about not being able to get pregnant, He meows and licks my cheek as if to say, It's okay. But recently, I've had another problem. My mother in law's health is rapidly declining. She was diagnosed with diabetes, and even though she's been given countless warnings to eat healthier, she's doubling down on her bad habits. Sure, everyone wants to enjoy life and eat good food, but I can't help but worry about her long term care. If she doesn't take care of herself, who will have to take care of her? Me. What's this garbage? She complains. I can't help but feel like the bad daughter in law. Between her snide remarks about my inability to conceive and her refusal to take care of herself, it's too much to handle. I was starting to question my marriage. But then, a miracle happened. After five years of fertility treatments, I found out I was finally pregnant. At the doctor's office, I could already see the heartbeat. The risk of miscarriage was low. I was ecstatic. I practically floated out of the office and couldn't wait to tell Eric. When I got home, I was so excited that I immediately scooped Max up into my arms and spun around, laughing. You're going to have a little brother or sister soon. I danced around the house with joy. I wanted to make the pregnancy announcement special, so I cleaned the house and made a fancy dinner. I even thawed out the foie gras I'd been saving for a special occasion. But when Eric got home, he wasn't in the mood. Welcome home, I said, trying to sound casual. Hmm, you're late. Everything okay? He mumbled something about visiting his mom. I was too excited to notice his tired expression. Hey, guess what? I've got good news and bad news. Which do you want first? Hmm, <laughs> doesn't matter, he replied flatly. I told him the bad news first that I'd accidentally burned the steak. I expected him to laugh, but he stayed stone faced. Then I dropped the bombshell. I'm pregnant. I expected him to be over the moon, but instead, he just stood there silent. Uh, what's wrong? I asked. He paused, 
then dropped his own news. My mom has gone blind due to her diabetes, and I've decided that we're moving in with her so you can take care of her. Uh, wait, what? I couldn't believe what I was hearing. I was pregnant, and now he expected me to move in with his blind mother and take care of her on top of everything else? I refused, flat out. Then came the final blow. He looked me dead in the eye and said, We can't afford to have this baby right now. You need to give the baby up. There's no way I could take care of my mother-in-law, who not only has diabetes, but is also blind. We have a responsibility to take care of our own baby now. But since Eric's the main caregiver now for his mom, he had to look after his mom. But I personally thought that we could also hire help. Eric could handle the paperwork for the care insurance, and I'd help too. I thought I'd try to compromise and make a suggestion, but Eric wasn't even willing to negotiate. He said, Are you seriously suggesting we hire someone else to take care of her? It's obvious a woman should do it. Caregiving is a woman's job. It's up to you. Who says caregiving is a woman's job? Men and women both should take responsibility. Either way, I will not give up on my baby. And I absolutely refuse to move in with his mother or take care of her. After that, Eric kept trying to convince me, but I kept saying no. I knew things would get worse if my mother-in-law went completely blind, but that was beside the point. There was no way I'd move in or give up my child. Eric, frustrated that I wouldn't budge, started getting desperate. And then a dark thought crossed his mind. Why won't my wife agree? Why won't she take care of my mother? Oh, right. It's because she's pregnant. If she wasn't pregnant anymore, she'd agree to move in. That night, as I was walking home alone, it was pitch black under a new moon. I got off the train and walked through the underpass. As I climbed the stairs, I dropped my handbag. I bent down to pick it up, and just as I did, I sensed someone behind me. No one was around, but suddenly, I felt a soft push on my back. I lost my balance. The edge of the step seemed to come at me in slow motion as I tumbled forward. I twisted my body to protect my stomach, but in that split second, I caught a glimpse of a familiar face. I screamed as I fell down the stairs. I couldn't believe my own husband had pushed me. My vision blurred, and I felt myself sinking into despair. Someone passing by saw me lying there and called an ambulance right away. I was rushed to the hospital where they ran tests and monitored both me and my baby. Lying in the hospital bed, I felt more than just physical pain. The emotional weight pressed down on me like a heavy blanket I couldn't shake off. My body ached, but the real wound came from the betrayal. Eric's face, his eyes, cold and indifferent, flashed in my mind every time I tried to close my eyes. I couldn't believe it. The man I once trusted with my life had almost taken it, along with our baby. The nurses were kind, gentle even, but their sympathetic smiles and quiet reassurances weren't enough to dull the sharp sting of my reality. You're doing great, dear, one of them said softly as she adjusted the IV line, but I barely registered the words. All I could think about was my baby. Despite the trauma, my child was okay. A miracle she clung to like a lifeline. Thankfully, my little one was okay. My parents visited every day, their concern radiating through every word and gesture. I could feel their anger, a protective shield around me. They weren't just angry, they were furious. I mean, they're my parents. Who wouldn't be angry if their child got hurt by their spouse? It was an unthinkable betrayal. And if it was an attempt on my unborn child's life, that made it even worse. 
My mom, usually the epitome of grace under pressure, couldn't contain her tears. How could he do this to you? She sobbed, clutching my hand tightly. To your baby. I tried to offer a reassuring smile, but felt her lips quiver. It's over now, mom. I'm not going back. I knew I was saying it as much for myself as for my mom. It had to be over. My dad, ever the pragmatist, had already begun discussing legal steps with a lawyer. We'll take him to court for this," he said sternly. "He's not getting away with it." But I was tired, so tired. The thought of seeing Eric again, of facing him in a courtroom, made my stomach churn. Still, I knew what my dad had said was right. There had to be consequences. Once I was discharged, I went back home with my parents, who ensured I was comfortable and cared for. I filed for divorce through a lawyer, my heart heavy yet determined. The process felt surreal, like I was watching it unfold from a distance. I never thought I would end up here, but Eric's actions had left me with no choice. Eric, who had been released on bail, found out about the divorce and panicked. Hey. This divorce can't be real. You're just messing with me," he shouted, his voice filled with desperation. It was chilling how often he could say something like that, considering he almost killed me. He insisted it was all a misunderstanding. You thought I was trying to scare you, but I ended up shoving you instead. I couldn't trust his excuses. Honestly, they sounded too rehearsed for the police. I'm hiring a lawyer to sue you for bodily injury," I told him, my voice steady. "You should talk to your lawyer about alimony for the divorce. I don't want to see you again. I'm scared you'll try to hurt me again." The tremor in his voice was unmistakable. "How are you going to take care of my mom? She can't see anymore." "Who's going to take care of her? I don't know. It should either be you or your dad. Not me, definitely." Remember, your mother always says she wanted that when she passed away, right? His silence spoke volumes. I'm also going to ask my lawyer for a repayment of that loan my dad gave you, so you better have the money ready. Until now, my parents had helped pay for my infertility treatment as a loan, not a gift, which had complicated things between my father and Eric. They had high hopes for us, believing in a future filled with laughter and the pitter patter of little feet. The plan had been to work things out after an inheritance, but now that we were divorcing, my dad had no reason to keep lending Eric money. Alimony and child support are two separate things, so make sure you've got funds for both. The realization hit him hard, his face paling. Are you seriously going to give up on your kid? Eric kept babbling nonsense. <sighs> who said I would? No matter who the father is, the baby's still my child. Even through all this trouble, I could feel the baby moving inside me—a small reminder of the love I had for my child. I knew I'd give birth to a healthy child, even if I never got to see his face. After our divorce, while Eric was being investigated, he shouted that he wouldn't take care of his mother. His lawyer thought he might get a suspended sentence, but that wouldn't clear him of becoming a felon. He'd probably lose his job too, which he'd already retired from. And the irony wasn't lost on me. His actions had spiraled out of control, and now he was facing the consequences. I couldn't help but wonder how the four of us—me, my father-in-law, my mother-in-law, and Eric with a criminal record—would manage together. My in-laws were going to pay my alimony, child support, and debt repayments all at once since Eric didn't have a dime to his name. Apparently, that's why they sold their house. They thought a smaller apartment with stairs would be easier for my blind mother-in-law to navigate than a big house, making it simpler to care for her. Honestly, I wasn't concerned about looking after her anymore. I was divorced now, just enjoying with my baby at my parents' house. My cat Max, who I'd brought back home, was always beside me and my baby. Max, you're a big brother now. Be nice to your little sibling. It felt like Max understood me. His gentle nudges a source of comfort. 
I knew my baby would feel the love of two parents, even if one of them was a jerk. With each passing day, I felt stronger and more capable of handling whatever life threw my way. I was ready to embrace motherhood, to shower my baby with love because no matter what happened with their father, they were still here because they wanted to be. Then, a few weeks after the divorce was finalized, news broke out about Eric. The news of Eric's arrest spread like wildfire. His story became the talk of the town. It was a small town. Gossip traveled fast, and Eric's downfall was the juiciest topic anyone had heard in months. Did you hear? He lost his job. One woman whispered in a cafe. I heard he can't even pay his bills anymore. Another chimed in. Apparently, after losing his job, he fell into a deep depression. Eric's life had spiraled into a pit of chaos. The job that once defined him was gone. His reputation shattered beyond repair. Friends he thought he could rely on distanced themselves, unwilling to be associated with a man who had harmed his own wife. He struggled to make ends meet, and without his mother's support, things only got worse. His reputation suffered as the police investigation continued, painting him as a man who couldn't even care for his mother. Let alone himself. His mother, blind and unable to care for herself, was placed in a state funded care home with her husband. The shame of it all hung over him like a cloud. But the worst part? He was alone. Completely, utterly alone. The world he had so desperately tried to control has slipped through his fingers, leaving him grasping at nothing. As the police investigation dragged on, Eric found himself on the wrong side of the law more than once. His drinking had gotten worse, and it was only a matter of time before he hit rock bottom. When the DUI charges were filed, it was the final nail in the coffin. The man who once thought he had it all, who thought he could bend everyone around him to his will, was now facing prison time, jobless, penniless, and forsaken by those he had taken for granted. As I prepared for the birth of my child one day, I received a call from my lawyer. Jessica, I have some news about Eric. I braced myself for the worst. He was involved in a hit and run incident. He was arrested for driving under the influence. It looks like he's going to face serious charges. My heart raced. I felt a mix of emotions relief, anger, and a strange sense of justice. The following weeks saw Eric's life spiral further out of control. His lawyer couldn't save him this time. With each court appearance, his situation worsened, and he became a shadow of the man he once was. Friends distanced themselves, and his family was too ashamed to support him. As I prepared for the arrival of the baby, I felt a sense of closure. Eric's downfall was a reminder that actions have consequences. My parents stood by me, offering unwavering support, and I was surrounded by love. I held my baby and my loved ones close, cherishing every moment. And as I watched my child sleep peacefully, I thought about the future. Eric may have fallen, but I have risen above the chaos. My life was filled with hope, and I was determined to make sure my child would never feel the pain I had endured. Through it all, I learned that strength. Comes in many forms. I wouldn't let Eric's darkness overshadow the light that my child brought into the world. As for Eric, he would have to face the consequences of his choices alone. A reminder that every action has its repercussions. <laughs>